So class starts at 1015, which means you should expect me to, if I wanted to, to start lecturing at 1015 in two seconds. So if you're one of the half of the class that shows up and actually logs in after 1015, um, you need to start logging in before 1015 and being ready to start right at 1015, which means you know the next homework assignment we're going to do is going to be the next worksheet page that we're working on, and you need to be ready to take notes in most cases. Okay? When you first come into the classroom, if you've got homework to show me, which quizzes and tests you cannot show me, you've got to remember to type that into chat. And if we have a new homework assignment, you also know to type the burning question numbers in chat. But since we don't have anything that's due today, it's all been due previously, we are just going to start with our lecture. So you guys have about a month until we go back to four day a week classes for you guys. So when the middle schoolers come back at the end of November, instead of you guys having class at 1015 on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you guys will have class third period, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Okay, so you're about ready to go back to four day a week classes. And then the following week when high school students come back, you will be in the classroom. And when the bell rings, we will be starting class. For those that are not coming back to the classroom that often stay home even when the rest of the school comes back, you need to be ready, logged in, so that when we uh, project the class, you are able to participate in it. So let's talk about evaluating square roots. Wait, 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 wait. No. You, you, you just, you. What, right. what, what's I'll, the way to go? Just don't mention any names and go ahead and talk. What's your question? So what do you mean that we're starting back in like school? Like we are at school. When? So November, whatever the last Monday in November is, is the middle schoolers. I will write it down. We've already known about this forever. No, November 30th, the middle schoolers come back. Once they come back, they are going to be here from 8 o'clock in the morning until 3.20 in the afternoon, just like a normal school day. So that means Monday to Thursday, regular seven period schedule. So for the high schoolers, it's all gonna be distance during that one week. On December 7th, the high schoolers come back. So that means everyone that is coming back to the classroom will be in class. I think we have like two to three people that are opting for distance learning for the whole time, they will need to log in during class period. So December 7th, everybody's back that are coming back to the classroom. November 30th, because the middle schoolers are all going to be here, we have to, the rest of your schedule has to support their schedule. So as of right now, we are going away from the every other class day to a regular class schedule on November 30th. Sick. Yeah, that means four lessons a week and four homework assignments a week. Oh yes, you have to wear masks. You have to be no more than six feet apart. You have to sit in the same desk every day. You can't have a locker. You have to bring it, carry everything around with you. You're gonna get a wonderful letter from the principal between now and then. Oh my. And for the one that asked the previous question, um, everybody gets a Christmas break except for those that have to make up all their work, and then it's going to be a not very good break for you. Yes, there is a Christmas break. The class cal the school calendar was put out before the school year started. It is on the school's webpage. There is a Christmas break. You go, the, you go to school the week of December 7th. You go to the school the week of December 14th. Then you have the last two weeks of December off. We're back to school on January 4th. Okay, so that's that schedule. December 3rd. That's your next report card day. This grading period only has five weeks. 
Okay, the first grading period had six weeks. This grading period only has five weeks. So your term two report card is December 3rd, which means you have this week, three weeks in November, and then the week the middle schoolers come back after Thanksgiving week off. So that's our next report card. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. And you will have at least another test between now and then. Any other questions about the admin before we actually start the math then? Okay, back to the math. Evaluating square roots. Okay, I have most of you for eighth grade math. And last year, we said that the square root is the inverse of the squaring function. Okay. So in order for me to evaluate square roots, and when you come back to school, um, there are no calculator and calculator portions of tests, and I get to watch you not use a calculator because I'm watching over you during those tests. Here's what I expect you to know for squares. One squared, two squared, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, Uh, no, I don't want 13, I want 15. After 12, I want you to know 15, 20, 25, 25. So those are the perfect squares I expect you to know immediately. If somebody writes it down as a problem, I expect you to know what it is immediately. Oh, I forgot one, 16, 256. And I'm gonna show you how I come up with the 16 squared. Well, 16 is four times four. Which, so that's equal to four squared times four squared, which is four is two times two. So that's equal to two squared times two squared times two squared times two squared. Times two squared. And from eighth grade math, you learned that was two to the eight. I expect you to be able to do powers of two fairly easily. So two to the first is two, two squared is four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024, 2048, and 4096. Those numbers that I just wrote down there on the bottom of the board, those powers of two show up so frequently in uh, computer science, uh, some statistics stuff when we're doubling things and stuff like that, that you should recognize things that become powers of two. So to evaluate square roots, the first thing we need to know is we need to know what the squares are. So then we can undo them by doing the inverse operation. For example, because five squared is 25, comma, the square root of 25 is five. Okay, so all you're doing is you're working backwards. When we do inverse operations, we're doing the same thing to both sides of the equation. Okay, what we're doing is we're actually taking the square root of that side and then the square root of this side. 
And the key point here is the square root of something squared is that something. So in this case, the square root of 5 squared is 5. Okay, so the key thing for that sentence that I wrote down here, the square root of something squared is that something is this. So if I just give you a number that's underneath a square root symbol, what you need to do is find out what number times itself is that number. Okay? However, if I give you an equation... That looks like this. I say x squared is 25. What is x? I look at it this way. Well, to solve it, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And we said the square root of something squared is that something. And we said the square root of 25 was 5. However, if you are the one that is taking the square root to solve an equation, there are two answers here. Because if I go back to the original equation, it is asking myself, what number squared is 25? And there are two numbers that when I square them give me 25. The first one is 5 times 5. The second one is negative 5 times negative 5. So if you start out with an equation and you have to use square roots to solve it, you're going to give me two answers. So if start with an equation and you use square roots to solve, you're going to give me two answers. So I've shown you the little tricks that you're going to see here. I'm going to now do a couple of the problems from your homework. Your homework assignment, assign them all, but we're going to do some of them now. So if you actually have your homework sheet in front of you and do them along with me, you're going to get some of your homework knocked out. So question number one, evaluate the expression. Well, I'm going to copy this sign, and I'm going to say what – What's the square root of 81? And if I go all the way back to this slide, the square root of 81 is 9. And I just write the 9 down. So the answer to this one is plus or minus 9. The next one, what is the square root of 625? And if you memorized it last year like I asked you to in eighth grade, the answer is 25. There is no plus or minus here because they didn't put the plus or minus out in front and it was not an equation you solved, so you only have to give me the single answer. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna figure out how to approximate square roots to the nearest integer or do a review of that. What I'm gonna do is I am going to make a number line. I'm gonna make a new slide and we're gonna make a number line and then we're going to use this number line to answer the questions that are there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a number line that goes from, I want to see what we're going up to. We're going up to 138. I'm going to go from the number 0 to 12. Then underneath that number line, I'm going to put some other numbers, and I'm going to divide this evenly, so that's 6, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
9, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12. That's also the square root of 0, the square root of 1, square root of 4, square root of 9, So all I'm doing is I'm putting, matching up the square roots with the integers that they are. Because what I want to do is I want to figure out what the nearest integer is to some of these questions. So I've got a double number line here that matched things up. And I'm going to ask myself, I'm going to disregard the negative for right now. I'm going to find the square root of 29 and the square root of 138. So the square root of 29 and the square root of 138. So the square root of 29 is between the square root of 25 and the square root of 36. Well, it's four units away from this one. And it is seven units away from this one. So it is closer to this one, which makes it closer to actually the number five. And because I had a negative here, my answer would be negative five. For the 138, I figure out which one it's in between. It's in here, square root of 138. It is six away from this one. It is 17 away from this one, which means it's closer to this one which means it's closer to that one, which means it's 12, approximately 12. Are there any questions on how to approximate square roots if you do not have perfect squares? You just need to find out what two square roots that your number's in between and figure out which one it's closest to. Back to our first week of eighth grade math from last year, classifying numbers. This is when I talked about that whole thing of first thing, caveman saw cow, caveman cat counts cow, one, two, three, four, five. We came up with the natural, or another name for them, are our counting numbers. And those are the numbers one, two, three, all the way up to infinity. And then we realize that, hey, I have five cows, T-Rex uh, ate all five of my cows. How many cows do I have left? There was no way to represent not having any cows. So we added the number zero, and we came up with the whole numbers. So the whole numbers are all of my natural counting numbers plus the number zero. Then we had Big Smart Caveman. Big Smart Caveman says, hey, I'm going to loan you some cows. So in essence, you basically, you owe me cows back. And we had to have a way to represent owing cows. And that's where we came up with our negative numbers. And we added our negative numbers to the whole numbers. So like negative three, all the way back to infinity. all the way up to infinity, and we call these things integers. <sighs> and then we realized, hey, I don't have to sell a whole cow to somebody. I can sell part of a cow to somebody. And if I can break that cow into nice, even, nice things, nice, even fractions of integers, we have a new set of numbers called rational numbers. And a rational number was any number that can be written as a fraction of two integers. Um, the symbol for integers is Z. So this says that A and B are elements of the integers and B is not equal to zero. So a rational number is any number that I can write as a fraction of integers. 
A way to tell a rational number that a number is rational is it doesn't have a decimal point. Or the decimal terminates or the decimal repeats. Well, smart mathematician caveman says, hey, wait a second, if I got these things called rational numbers, there's gotta be some crazy numbers. I mean, irrational numbers. So our crazy numbers are our irrational ones. Are any one of my real numbers, this whole group of things we have up here are called my real numbers. An irrational number is any real number that's not rational. Okay, well, what are some examples? They are roots of non perfect blanks. So for example, square roots of things that are not perfect squares. Cube roots of things that are not perfect cubes. Okay, so that's one way to come up with them. Um, other th things that are irrational. Decimals never repeat and they never terminate. And we have a couple mathematical constants that have decimals that never repeat and never terminate. One of them is pi, okay, which is approximately that 3.1415, all the way keep on going. Another constant um, is E, which is called Euler's constant. This is actually a button on. So the two constants that are irrational that we use the most, these are two buttons on your calculator. Um, e is approximately 2.71828. It keeps on going, never repeats, never terminates. Um, so from our real numbers, if I give you a number, you should be able to look at it and tell me all the different categories that it falls into, okay? And if you had me for eighth grade math, you know, we have nice little check boxes that are, you know, which one of these doesn't belong, and we're gonna have a whole bunch of the multiple, multiple choice type questions to answer these types of questions on quizzes and tests. So I am going to start a poll question, and the poll question is going to say, I am done copying my real number notes. So I'm going to create a poll question, start a poll, done copying real number notes, and spell real correctly, and yes, or I ain't gonna copy anything. So I've launched the poll. So answer one of the two things when you're done, or if you're not going to do it, just answer the, the second choice. And this lets me know when I can go to the next slide. I am going to go to the next slide within the next three minutes or so, but um, if everybody answers before then, I will go to the slide earlier. And for those that are writing, that are answering, I ain't going to copy anything. At the end of these Google Meets, I actually get um, a list of who voted for what on your poll results. And those are nice things to send home with parent-teacher conference things and progress reports. Yep, we got half an hour, dog, and we'll go back out for a walk. Yep, yep. You just got to calm your horses. See, six of you are done. And for those of you that have had me for eighth grade and Algebra 1, this is the second time you've seen this classification. When you see me in Algebra 2, you will see it again. We're going to add some stuff to it. 
And if you've seen it for college algebra, you will see it again and we'll add some stuff to it. Got 10 of you. Let me check our wonderful thing. Um, Oh, we got 20 something of you. Go back to my poll. I got two more minutes that I'm going to continue. And again, these notes will get posted to um, before I go home today. Oh, which reminds me. We have parent-teacher conferences Wednesday and Thursday. There are no after-school office hours for me on Wednesday or Thursday. Um, so if you do need to see me for any help between now and the end, oh, and there is no school Friday, so there's no office hours on Friday. So if you need to see me for anything, um, you have today from 115 to 215 and 230 to 345. And then you have on Thursday from 115 to 215. Those are the only two slots I have left available for office hours. I got about three and a half hours of office hours between now and the end of the school week. So again, they're all showing up on your Google calendar. I've got 13 of you. I'm showing one more minute on my side. I'm gonna give a couple more seconds there for you. Okay, for uh, the person that just asked about that, anybody who has um, at least two classes below a C, you are scheduled to meet with all of your teachers at once for one like 20 minute session for all those classes that you have below a C. Your other teachers have, um, so we've scheduled those during some time slots. All of your teachers have a four hour and a three hour block of time that is set up on Zoom that you may call or email Carrie and then they will give you the, the teacher's block of time that you basically, you'll, you'll sign into Zoom, you'll go into a waiting room and then when the teacher's done with one group, they'll pull you in for the next one and so on. Okay, so anybody that's has below C in two or more classes, you were invited to meet with basically all the teachers you're not doing good with at the same time. Because most likely it's for the same reasons. So I am going to go ahead and end the poll. I'm gonna to go to the next bit of material. And we are, again, the notes will get posted today. So the next bit of material says to tell whether each number is a real number, rational, irrational, integer, or whole. So I want to know whether they're real. I want to know whether they are rational, irrational, integer. Oops. I don't like it when that happens. So integer is a Z. Um, a whole number. Okay, so I want to figure out which ones are which, and then I want to put them in order from smallest to biggest. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put check marks next to the ones they are. So real numbers. Every single number that we have talked about so far is a real number. So every one of these is real. Every number, well, most of the numbers that we have, that we see when we're dealing with math at the high school level are rational. The only ones that we know are irrational are roots of things that don't have perfect things and are constants like pi and Euler's number. So the only one that is irrational is the square root of five. 
So that means the rest of them are rational because they can all be expressed as a fraction of integers. For example, this one is negative six over one. This one is five halves. This one I already see is negative 24 fifths, a fraction of integers. The next ones I have are integers. Integers are like my negative five, negative four, negative three, seven, eight, 52. So it's integer. Well, if it's irrational, it's definitely not an integer. That one's not an integer because it's a decimal. That one doesn't simplify. So the only integer I have out of this whole mess is negative six. Then I ask myself, are any of these whole numbers? And if we go back here, my whole numbers are zero up through infinity counting by ones. There ain't a single whole number in this list. So when you get ready to take the quiz and test for this section, this is the layout it's going to be. And there's going to be boxes for each one of these places that I have a check or an X. And what you're going to do is you're going to click the places that need the checks. Okay? So that's why I laid it out this way for you. So what I want to do now is I want to approximate these things. So this one right here is um, about negative 5. I don't have to be very precise here. This one right here is between 2 and 3, but it's closer to 2 because two is the square root of four, three is the square root of nine, this one's closer to two, and now I need to put them in order from smallest to biggest. Any questions on the reasoning that I use to come up with my order? Okay, next, evaluating an expression. Okay, on your guys' tests and qu the last quizzes that you did. Okay, what a lot of you did when it said evaluate the expression and you typed it in for the first one, you gave me this for an answer. The word evaluate means I want a single number for an answer. So to evaluate an expression means you substitute the information they gave you, then you actually do the work. Well, we know the square root of four is two, then two minus 5.5 .5 is negative 3.5. Oops, we gotta talk about why I did that in that order. I think I covered this at the beginning of the year, but I'm gonna do it again. Mr. Taylor's order of operations, grouping symbols. So those are parentheses, brackets, squiggly braces, um, top and bottom uh, fractions. Um, anything underneath a radical. So we have some invisible grouping symbols. There's invisible ones at the top and the bottom of a fraction. There's invisible ones inside square root symbols. We do those first. Then we do um, exponents. And I told you in this step, we also do roots. Later this year, you're going to, um, I did show you an eighth grade. But later this year, again, I'm going to show you that the square root is just a fractional exponent. So we're going to learn that the square root of x is the same thing as x to the one-half power. Okay? And that exponent is why I do roots before I did the subtraction. So that was just a quick reminder. So now for 18, I go 2 times the square root of 100 minus one, order of operations, I do the square root first, square root of 100 is 10, then I do the multiplication, then I do the subtraction. Any questions on 16 and 18?
And because Mr. Taylor knew he was going to yell at you today because a lot of people were going to show up late and he's really upset that a lot of people didn't do their test, he decided he was going to do one of your story problems today. How about that? So we're going to do one of your story problems from the work. You are building a square flower bed shown using railroad ties. If you want to place another railroad tie in the diagonal to form two triangular beds, find the length of diagonal by using the expression square root of 2s squared, where s is the side length, round your answer to the nearest tenth. So this is s. So I'm just going to go the square root of 2 times 5 squared, which is the square root of 2 times 25, which is the square root of 50. Once we get to this point, it's telling me to round to the nearest tenth, so because it is telling me to round, this is um, telling me to use a calculator. So I'm going to do the square root of 50 in the calculator, and I'm going to put approximately 7.1. And the units are feet. Now I will tell you, by the end of the year, we are going to be doing less and less approximation, and I'm going to want the exact simplified answer. Well, let's look at this. Isn't this, let's go back to the original equation. Another way I could write that is the square root of 2 times the square root of s squared. And didn't we say at the beginning of class the square root of something squared is just that something? Well, in this case, my S was 5. My exact answer for this problem would be 5 times the square root of 2 feet. So by the end of the year, and all the way through Algebra 2, in most cases, you are going to be giving me exact simplified answers. Um, and there will be some problems that they ask you to round your answer to the nearest tenth. Here is a Mr. Taylor trick. A lot of times on standardized tests, the answers are these simplified radicals, these exact answers. If you were to put 5 times the square root of 2 in the calculator and round it to the nearest tenth, you would get 7.1. So let's say you do the work on a standardized test and you get 7.1 in the calculator and you have four multiple choice answers. Type each of those multiple choice answers into the calculator to see if you get the same decimal, okay? So even if you have difficulties determining whether, uh, how to simplify things in simplest radical form, you can still get the correct multiple choice answer by working backwards. So that's Mr. Taylor's tip and trick for the day on how to work through uh, standardized testing. So what I'm going to do is stop my recording.